Hey guys, Quinn here from Micrographics Durban, Application Engineer. Just wanted to uh, address this one thing I was asked more recently about, um, you know, quality of a model. Basically, like the high fidelity of some of my models, etc. Now, normally when I'm drawing for, well, in any actual real sense or when I'm designing stuff, um, I won't be using as high fidelity as you're seeing as like the, the model that you're currently looking at. Well, what do I mean by that is... If you're looking at things like if you look at my grating you can see it's got the see-through grating over there so you can see through it and it looks quite nice and if you look at the pump the pump is at a very high level of detail so if you're looking at BIM um, you'll probably be looking at like BIM 400 um, level maybe 300 depending um, probably 400 so and what do I mean by those if those aren't making sense to you is actually worthwhile looking up as to the levels of detail because with plants and that, one of the things that people kind of have got the wrong impression about is they try and bring in very high density models, make it very heavy. And that, uh, what I mean by that is that it's, um, it's got so much data in it for what you're needing at this level of what plant is actually designed to do. It's designed to assist you with the piping and getting everything together so you can produce your ISOs, etc. from it. So what you want is an overview model, basically. So you're looking at more like then the, maybe um, if you're looking at the BIM level, BIM 100 or 200, and that will give you a better idea. Um, unless you're dealing more with smaller plants or you want that higher level of detail. The reason why I'm also doing it here is because my system that I'm currently working on is quite a powerful system. So I can quite easily handle, especially these smaller models at this type of level. Now, um, if you are wanting to play around with your level of detail, one of the quickest and easiest ones is to actually adjust the structural steel. Now, the rest of these will be dependent on, um, for instance, the models. This is an external model that I've brought in. And that would be defined as to either if you're downloading it, what level of detail it are, or if you're bringing it from another package that you've designed, maybe consider like if it's Inventor, consider using when you're shrink wrapping it, um, shrink wrap more things out of it or into it. So your holes, features like fillets and chamfers, that type of stuff. So that would like make your model a lot lighter weight. It may not look as pretty, but it, your performance will be much, much better. Um, you can always, at the end of the day, when you're using, if you're wanting to provide a high detailed graphic, rather than use a piece of software that is more inclined to doing that, something like 3ds Max, etc., and then you can put in the correct one, yeah, the correct model in there. That being said, sorry. Now getting back to what, uh, what I was wanting to quickly show you is things like your structural steel can actually quickly and easily be changed with not too much effort. If you come to the, or if you go to the structure t uh, tab, parts panel you'll notice that there's actually a little drop down here called shape model. Sorry, sorry, your drop down over here, which actually defines to what shape the model is going to take. So normally to start with, it would be in line model, which you end up with just these lines. Now this is nice because it gives you just a very high level overview of what's there, where what the steel work is running, how it is running, where its center lines are, etc. And if you actually take a look, it even gives you a little graphic as to what is there on that line and where the center, what this line is representing. So in this case, this is representing the center line. That is line model. If we went into symbol model, you'll see it will give us this very similar information as to those, that previous one that I showed you, not the line model, sorry, the shape model, but you notice it is just flat to the there's no actual depth to it. It's just a plane on the top, plane in the middle, plane in the bottom. So that gives you a basic shape. If you want a little bit more information, so you actually want it to be in 3D, you'll notice that there's a nice 3D view of it. So it's very similar to the previous one, but instead of being flat planes, you've now got a 3D shape. And then lastly, you've got shape model. Now. Notice the difference between your shape model, when I'm just moving off it, you'll notice that it's got fillets on the sides, where the other one doesn't. Now, just be aware, things like fillets in that is going to create 
it's going to be almost an exponential increase in your processing power that this is going to use. So be very wary of sometimes using shape model, especially on large models. Um, I highly recommend rather when you're working with it, um, at best stick to outline model because this will give you both a good quality view and also better performance. Thanks guys. I hope this has been a bit helpful. If you've got any queries in that, please drop us a mail, let us know. Yeah, and we can take it further from there. Thanks. Hope this has helped. Cheers. Bye.